Coffee Break German Lesson 22. Herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Welcome back once again to Coffee Break German. Ich heiße Mark und ich bin der Student. Der Student oder der Schüler? Der Schüler. Okay, so I'm the learner here and we are here with Thomas. Mein Name ist Thomas und ich bin der Lehrer. Thomas, our native speaker, who is here to help us with our German. Wie geht's dir heute? Ah, Mark, mir geht's nicht so gut. Ich habe Kopfschmerzen, mein Bauch tut weh und ein bisschen Halsweh habe ich auch. I'm assuming that we're going to be learning what all of this means in this lesson, because today, if Thomas is not feeling so good, we're actually going to be talking about parts of the body and when you've got things that are sore, when you've got headache and stomachache and so on. So, los geht's. Lass uns anfangen. Before we get on to, to our new topic, let's do a little bit of review about the weather and the time. Okay, so have you got some things for me to translate into German? Yeah, I have indeed. Today the weather is good, it is warm and sunny. Okay, as usual we'll give our listeners some time to think this through and then I'll try my answer. Let's hear it one more time. Today the weather is good, it is warm and sunny. So I think this would be Heute ist das Wetter gut. Es ist warm und sonnig. Gut, richtig. Next one. At the moment it's raining and it's cold in Germany. Okay, so at the moment is im Moment. Ja. Im Moment regnet es und Ist das kalt in Deutschland? Almost. After the und, you can go back to the usual order. Und es ist kalt. So, im Moment regnet es und es, und es ist kalt in Deutschland. Im Moment regnet es und es ist kalt in Deutschland. This afternoon, it's going to snow. Do we know this afternoon? You can say today, afternoon, heute, Nachmittag. And of course, nach is after, and mittag is midday, so after midday, afternoon. Heute, nachmittag. Okay, so the whole sentence was, this afternoon, it's going to snow. So I think that would be, heute nachmittag wird es schneien. Heute nachmittag wird es schneien. Wird it's a kind of T sound at the end of that. Wird es schneien? Yeah, but it's spelled with a D. Wird. Okay. Wird es schneien? Heute Nachmittag wird es schneien. So that's almost like saying this afternoon it will snow. Yeah. Okay. And what about one more about the weather? Tomorrow evening it will be extraordinarily hot. Okay, it's good to know that you have some difficulties saying some words as well, even though your English is wonderful. Uh, so tomorrow afternoon, it will be extraordinarily hot. And I think that would be morgen Abend, tomorrow evening, wird es außergewöhnlich heiß. Morgen Abend wird es außergewöhnlich heiß. Sehr gut, Mark. Okay. What about practicing some time from last time? Can you remember the phrase for what's the time? So as far as I remember, there were two versions of that. We can say, wie viel Uhr ist es? How many hours is it? Or, wie spät ist es? Ganz genau. So how late is it, literally? And I'll just give you some times and you try to translate them. It is 10 to 4. Es ist 10 vor 4. Richtig. It is 20 past 8. Es ist 20 nach 8. 
It is quarter past or quarter after twelve. Es ist Viertel nach zwölf. Richtig. And the last one, tricky. It is half past four. I'm not going to be cut out here. Es ist halb fünf. Sehr gut. Dankeschön. So at the start of this lesson, I asked you, wie geht's? How are you feeling? Before we go into the problems, the health problems and the the saying that you've got a sore head and so on. Let's think about the answers that we already know to this question. We already know to say that everything is in order. Alles in Ordnung. Alles in Ordnung. We also have used the phrase alles klar. Alles klar. It's just a little bit more colloquial. Okay. We have also been able to say mir geht's gut. Mir geht's gut. Mir geht's ausgezeichnet. Or we learned a new word. Außergewöhnlich. So could I say, mir geht's außergewöhnlich gut? Yeah, you can say that if you're on the top of your mood. Mir geht's außergewöhnlich gut. And then, mir geht's nicht so gut? That was, I'm not, I'm feeling not so good. And how would you say, I'm feeling bad? Mir geht's schlecht. Yeah, sehr gut. Mir geht's schlecht. Now, it would make sense to follow up an answer like, mir geht's nicht so gut or mir geht's schlecht with... The question for why? Warum? 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 You could say, warum geht's dir nicht so gut, Mark? Warum geht's dir nicht so gut? So why aren't you feeling so good? Why is it not going to you so good? Exactly. Okay. So let's turn that round to you and, and you can answer the same way you answered earlier. Warum geht's dir nicht so gut, Thomas? Ich habe Kopfschmerzen. Let's hear that again. Ich habe Kopfschmerzen. So I can pick out some words in there. Ich habe, obviously, is I have. And then you said Kopfschmerzen. Schmerzen. Ich habe Kopfschmerzen. I have head pain. Head pain. So a headache. I have a sore head. Ja. Kopf, der Kopf is the head. And Schmerzen, pain. So der Kopf. Der Kopf. The head, so that's a masculine word, der Kopf, and then you said Schmerzen. It's the plural plural of Schmerz, der Schmerz, die Schmerzen, the pain. Okay, so I have head pains, literally. Yeah. And in English, we'd be most likely to say, I have a headache or I have a sore head. You can also use that construction with other parts of the body. So, for example, you could say, ich habe Bauchschmerzen. So, der Bauch is the stomach. Der Bauch. Der Bauch. Ich habe Bauchschmerzen. Ich habe Bauchschmerzen. So I have stomachache. Der Bauch, another masculine word. Der Kopf, der Bauch. Bauch or another one. Der Rücken, the back. Der Rücken. Der Rücken. Der Rücken. Ich habe Rückenschmerzen. Ja. I have backache. Another masculine one. Der Hals. Der Hals. The throat. Throat, yeah, the throat. So, ich habe Halsschmerzen. Ich habe Halsschmerzen. I have throat ache. I have a sore throat. Yeah. I have pains in my throat, I guess. Ich habe Halsschmerzen. Mark, what other kind of aches can you think of in English? Well, we could have earache. Would be Ohrenschmerzen. Das Ohr. Das Ohr. So, that's a, a, a neuter word. Das Ohr. And then Ohrenschmerzen, because it's die Ohren, plural. So, ich habe Ohrenschmerzen. Ich habe Ohrenschmerzen. I have earache. Uh, you also get toothache. Oh ja, der Zahn, the tooth. Der Zahn. And then it's Zahnschmerzen. Zahnschmerzen. So, ich habe Zahnschmerzen. Ich habe Zahnschmerzen. Let's go back and go through these because there's quite a lot of vocabulary there. Let's begin with head. The head. Der Kopf. And I have a headache. Ich habe Kopfschmerzen. Ich habe Kopfschmerzen. The stomach. Der Bauch. And I have a stomachache. I have stomachache. Ich habe Bauchschmerzen. Ich habe Bauchschmerzen. 
Back, the back. Der Rücken. And I have back ache. Ich habe Rückenschmerzen. And the throat. Der Hals. And I have throat ache. Ich habe Halsschmerzen. Ich habe Halsschmerzen. And then we had the ear. Das Ohr. And the ears. Die Ohren. And then I have ear ache. Ich habe Ohrenschmerzen. Ich habe Ohrenschmerzen. And then finally we had the tooth. Der Zahn. And I have toothache. Ich habe Zahnschmerzen. Ich habe Zahnschmerzen. In English, when we have a part of the body that doesn't normally have a word with ache after it. So for example, let's say hand. We wouldn't say I have hand ache. That sounds a little strange. I would say my hand is sore or I have a pain in my hand. How do you say that in German? The word for hand is die Hand. Die Hand. So meine Hand, my hand, tut mir weh. So meine Hand was the my hand part, which makes sense. Then what's the next part? Tut mir weh. Tut mir weh. Das to me hurt. So does to me hurt, literally. Tut, does, mir, to me, which we've heard lots. Weh. Weh, yeah. There's not an actual word, but the meaning is like, hurts me. Hurts me. Okay, so meine Hand tut mir weh. Meine Hand tut mir weh. And just to recap on something we've done previously, it's meine Hand because Hand is die Hand, is feminine. Exactly. Just like meine Schwester, meine Mutter. For der it would be? Mein. Very good. For example, mein Kopf tut mir weh. Also, we can say mein Kopf tut mir weh and also ich habe Kopfschmerzen. Both works. So, but we couldn't say ich habe Handschmerzen. Nein. Okay. Um, so let's learn some other parts of the body that we can use with tut mir weh. Der Arm, the arm. Der Arm. So that would be mein Arm tut mir weh. Genau. Another one, der Fuß. Der Fuß, I'm going to guess that that's foot. Very good. Uh, mein Fuß tut mir weh. Mein Fuß tut mir weh. Again, another masculine one. So der Arm. Der Fuß. Now a neuter one. Das Bein. The leg. Das Bein. Das Bein. Now neuter would be mein Bein. Tut mir weh. It's the same as masculine. Very good. So der Kopf. Mein Kopf. And das Bein. Mein Bein. So mein Bein tut mir weh. My leg does to me hurt. Good. Strange English, but we, we know what it means. Anything else? Die Nase, the nose. Die Nase. So that would be meine Nase tut mir weh. Excellent. And last one, das Auge, the eye. So that would be mein Auge tut mir weh. Genau. How would I say my eyes are sore? Meine Augen tun mir weh. Meine Augen tun mir weh. So we've got a plural there in our noun. Das Auge, the eye. Die Augen. Die Augen. The eyes. And meine Augen tun mir weh. So what would the legs be? Meine Beine tun mir weh. Oh, I like that one. Meine Beine tun mir weh. My legs are sore. Mark, I got a question for you. Imagine you're at the doctor's and the doctor's going to ask you something and he says, Wo tut es Ihnen weh? Would he be saying, Where does it hurt? Wo tut es Ihnen weh? Where does it hurt to you? Where does it to you hurt? Yeah. And the formal version, Ihnen. Ihnen, okay. So if I were saying to my son, for example, would I say, Wo tut es dir weh? Exactly. Okay, so uh, es tut mir weh, uh, meine Augen tun mir weh, and uh, wo tut es dir weh? Or you can also say, wo hast du or wo haben sie Schmerzen? Where do you have pains? Yeah. 
wo haben sie Schmerzen? Or the, form, the informal one was? Wo hast du Schmerzen? Okay, so I think with all these pains and the fact that you're not feeling too good, Thomas, you should put your feet up and we should sit back and have a listen to Julia, our cultural correspondent, who's going to be sharing with us some information about how German speakers spend their summer. Over to you, Julia. Hallo alle zusammen. As promised, today I'm bringing you the second part of my little summer special. Despite our relatively cold winters, summers can get very hot in Germany. Here in Berlin, there are days when we have about 35 or even 40 degrees Celsius in July and August. So you really need to get out of the house and there are many different options for doing that. When you visit a German town, you'll see that almost every house has balconies. Germans love their balconies and decorate them with flower pots and sometimes even grow their own herbs and vegetables on them. German towns tend to be very green, generally, and you can find several parks which aren't closed or locked at night, but open to the public, where you can have barbecues and picnics and parties on the lawn whenever you want. So don't be confused when seeing a group of people walking through a, for example, Berlin street, carrying a barbecue, box of drinks and several bags of food around. There are sure to be headed to one of the parks nearby. Of course, for many people, this is not enough. They enjoy spending time in their own little Schrebergarten, which is the equivalent of the British concept of allotment. These Schrebergärten can be found throughout Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Traditionally, Schrebergärten were only used for non-commercial gardening, so people growing their own fruit and vegetables. But today you also often just find lawns in them, sometimes decorated with the famous mm, but somewhat cheesy garden gnomes or Gartenzwerge, as we would call them. Usually people have a little hut in their Schrebergarten, which they can use as a tool shed. However, in some cases this hut can be a bit more elaborate, more like a bungalow, including a kitchen, bathroom and bedroom, so that they can stay in their garden for whole weekends. For another group of people, this is still not enough. These people long to get away from the city for months at a time, renting a space at a camping site, where they live in their caravan or trailer for several months throughout the summer. We call these people Dauercamper, permanent campers. I hope you get the chance to come here during the summer months. Maybe not to do some dauer camping, but to explore the beautiful landscapes and the happy atmosphere at this time of year. Und nun zurück zu Thomas und Marc ins Studio. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal. Also, das reicht für heute. Glaube ich auch. We will be back again soon and we'll be continuing this topic of pains and visiting the doctors and also the pharmacy to help you cope with these emergencies that may arise. Hopefully they won't arise, but they may arise while you're on vacation in a German-speaking country. Please visit our website so we know what you're thinking by leaving a comment or posting a review. And of course, at coffeebreakgerman.com, you'll find all the information you need to get more out of this course. Now, you may be listening to this at some point in the future, and that's ausgezeichnet. But if you're listening right now, while we're recording this, it is the end of August 2013, and we're right in the middle of our back-to-school sale. So, to find out how you can save on the premium membership for Coffee Break German, head over to radiolingua.com. If you are listening in the future and our sale is no longer on, then the best way to keep up to date with when we are offering some reduced prices on our memberships is to join us on Facebook, that's facebook.com slash coffeebreakgerman, to follow us on Twitter at learngerman, and of course to sign up to our mailing list, which you can do at radiolingua.com. Now, over the past couple of weeks, we've not had any grammar content for you, But next week, you'll be pleased to know Kirsten is back and she'll be talking about demonstrative adjectives. Now, I promise that's not as bad as it sounds. We will be joined by Kirsten and by Julia. And of course, Thomas and I will be here next week once more. Until the next time, bis zum nächsten Mal. Dankeschön und tschüss. Tschüss.
This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.